697,000 people died last year from a cardiac disease and a heart attack. 800,000 people had a heart attack, um, not to mention all the other problems, right? Diabetes, cancers, autoimmune disease, inflammation, the list goes on and on and on. Our, our American food system and our diet and our medical system is all kind of unfortunately set up to get us sick, right? Um, so processed foods are destroying us. And it's, and I've realized that and, and this was in past jobs. I'm opening hotels and restaurants for fancy people and eating oysters and, you know, doing all the things that chefs do, but realizing like I'm not making an impact. How do I do something to make an impact? This is the Healthy Lifestyle Solutions Podcast, and I'm your host, Maya Acosta. If you're willing to go with me, together we can discover how simple lifestyle choices can help improve our quality of life and increase our longevity in a good way. Let's get started. So friends, I'm so excited about today's episode. I had a wonderful conversation with Chef William Harris. He works for Whole Harvest. He actually helped build the True Food Kitchen chain early on um, when they were developing. And so uh, I learned a little bit about his connection with True Lux um, Kitchen here in the Dallas area. Uh, I also learned about how he started at a very young age working in the restaurant business when a friend of his, the father, offered him a job. And so this is what he, he has pursued at such a young age. He went to the Culinary Institute of America and became an executive chef at the age of 23. He has had experiences in the East Coast and in the West Coast working with in so many different types of kitchens with various experiences. And so we talk about how the work that he does today is very mission driven. He wants to make a difference in this world and he wants to do it through feeding people whole food plant-based meals. And so he partnered with Whole Harvest. They are a meal prep service out of Denver. And so he curates all the dishes and we have this wonderful conversation about that, about what it's like to work with them, to provide these delicious meals, the science behind eating whole food plant-based. And we also talk about how these meals are really designed for people who want to get healthy, who maybe do not have a lot of time prepping in the kitchen, or you know, maybe you already are on board, but just need those extra meals to help alleviate a heavy schedule. So I can't wait for you to listen to this episode. Let me know what you think, and I hope that you enjoy Chef Will. Let's meet him. Hi, everyone. Yeah, thank you for having me, Maya. Thanks for that wonderful intro. Thank you so much for being on the show. And like I said, I did have the opportunity to sample some of the foods um, that you actually craft. And uh, so excited to meet you. And I started looking into your history and I couldn't believe it. I mean, you've been, uh, you have had this exposure to working in the kitchen for many, many years. So I was wondering, uh, first, Let's talk a little bit to the listeners that are not uh, aware of Whole Harvest. Please give us sort of a, a quick summary of Whole Harvest, and then we will get into your journey. Of course, yeah. Um, Whole Harvest started a few years ago um, in Kansas City, Missouri, and um, it's, it's owned by um, a couple of gentlemen that had had separate businesses and had their careers and and um, did quite well, and but then realized um, you know their lifestyles and their eating habits were starting to catch up with them. And one of the owners, um, amazing human being, um, name of Mike, he, uh, he had a couple heart problems. So cardio, cardiovascular disease. And, um, and he was doing the typical standard American diet at first, um, eating, uh, lots of barbecue being from Kansas and whatnot. And then, and then had his first heart attack. And, uh, so then started to listen to what everybody said. Okay. You need to have healthy oils. You need to have, uh, avocados you need to incorporate all these superfoods in your diet. So of course, like anyone, they would overuse those things. So right, he was piling in the walnuts, piling on the avocados, olive oil. So then um, clogged his heart a second time and so had a second heart attack and then uh, realized that, hey, it's time to make a complete life change. So what he did was um, started Whole Harvest so that he could eat a healthy plant-based diet. So um, And then realized that, hey, he's starting to heal himself with this food and it's working. Why not try to spread this love to some of his friends? So then Whole Harvest was pretty small at that point. Mike reversed his his heart um, issues, uh, completely opened up his arteries within a few months, 
and is uh, was bodybuilding. So he is he's this huge ball of of energy and muscle. He shines like a diamond, and um, he 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 eats exclusively this food. So when I first met this guy, I was like, "Wow, you're so inspiring! I can't believe this is this is all um, you know. You're doing this all on a plant based diet. I mean, I, I can't believe it because of the history of food I, I studied, but." Um, it was so inspiring to meet him and to to um, join Whole Harvest and and help grow this company. So now we are um, in a ten thousand square foot facility here in Denver, Colorado. We have restaurants on the way. Um, we we deliver direct to consumer. Um, we have a subscription. We we have connections with um, some clinical trials and medical studies. So we are have our our hands in our in our in our minds in many areas of, of healthy eating and, and plant-based food. So we're busy and we're, we're growing and um, we're here to help and help people grow. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. This is so exciting. You know, I didn't know that the facility was in Denver. I guess mm-hmm. I could, that's where the food is shipped from, right? Yep. Yep. We, uh, we're about a mile away from, from UPS. So they come pick up the food and it goes overnight all across the country. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Because Sharice did tell me that, uh, she, you know, the company will have a booth at the Lifestyle Medicine Conference, which uh-huh. is in Denver this year. So yeah. I'm so excited yeah. about that too. Well, this is wonderful. Amazing. So I'm, I'm eager to share all of this information because I, I'm always looking to support my listeners no matter where they are. And so while some people, you know, just need a little bit of support in optimizing their kitchen, so that they can cook the right foods. There are other people that are new to this lifestyle that could use the support by having, you know, foods that are already prepped. Absolutely. And I know, yeah, like I often share my story that the first year that I went plant-based, I started off on the right track and then we were traveling a lot. And next thing you know, Will, I'm like eating processed vegan foods and I actually gained weight my first year. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. And then my husband said, that was seven years ago. My husband said, why don't we try one of these meal prep companies? Uh, this is way before Whole Harvest, I think. How long has Whole Harvest been around? So it's, um, it's just kind of reached the limelight, um, only about a year, but we've, we've, uh, the company's been around for about three, four years. And so ah, it kind of, okay. kind of, uh, inched along during the pandemic times and the subscribers, uh, was really small at that time. But, um, mm-hmm. now we are, we're out of that time and, and, and launching. So we're trying to reach as many people as possible. Exactly. And yeah. I mean, and I, and I often say, you know, if you're just getting started or even if you're traveling or you're busy, especially when you go out of town on vacation, you come home, you have nothing that you can eat from the mm-hmm. refrigerator, right? Cause it's been sitting there or like me, I actually try to consume as much food from my refrigerator before I travel so that the food doesn't spoil. Absolutely. Um, I'd love to hear your story. Now, you have this amazing history. You know, you started your culinary journey at a young age in a busy fish restaurant. Um, how did that experience shape your passion for food? And what was the most significant lesson that you learned during that time? Um, yeah, so so early experience of working in a fast-paced kitchen, it was like a... What they don't teach you in high school, you learn at work, right? So that was like a crash course in economics. Okay, so hard work pays off in the form of money, which at the time meant I could buy more surfboards and have a better surfing style. And uh, so that's kind of how I looked at it. But then after about a year of working in high school, I realized that it had launched and opened these doors to to much more than just a paycheck, right? Um, it was huge. Uh, honestly, it shaped my passion for presenting the building blocks of a lifelong career. So uh a door to flavor. I was like obsessed with flavor growing up in San Diego. There's amazing street food. So amazing tacos and agua chilies and ceviches. And, and, um, I just had to put it all together because I wasn't getting that food at my house. I was, you know, my parents were busy and raising kids and, and so forth and working. So I would have to go out and find that flavor, find that, that, um, that next exciting spark of energy and flavor from food. So, I realized that cool, I could get paid to do this too. So, um, yeah, I was like 18 or 17 and kind of blown away for lack of better words, uh, working with these, with pirates, like, you know, pirates, people in kitchens in the, in the late nineties and early two thousands, they were very pirate. Like it didn't have kind of like the aura and prestige it does today. It, It was a little different. So, you know, I was working with people that Outside of the kitchen, their life was kind of piratey, but inside they had this regimental discipline 
And I was so enthralled by that. Um, I realized that as an 18 year old, I was, I was working with guys twice my age and they had to be so patient with me because I was a, I was a, you know, ADD, like give it to me now kind of person and working at a young age. Um, instead of going to a traditional college, I was, I was working and realized that that was my path, you know, culinary school much later. But, um, um, you know, I had, I had an in the, I knew the owner's son really well and we surfed together. So, um, and the, my friend was treated like a king in this restaurant. He would walk in and, and get the chair pulled out for him and his little Roy Rogers drink with a cherry on top and, and a big plate of fish. And I was like that, but I, I took it a step further and asked for a job. And his, his dad gave me a job and took a, took a risk and, and, uh, and uh, the whole staff, I realize now how patient they were with me and how much they taught me and how much because of my willingness to learn and, and start that process, that beautiful process of, of learning and discipline and, and um, you know, seeking knowledge was all because of that job. Um, mm -hmm. I learned to respect the process of teaching. I learned to be patient as a student, but then also realize that you had to go get it and grab it, right? Um, and then, and then in a kitchen environment, you, what you learn, you teach the next person. So then all of a sudden I was a teacher. So 18 years old teaching, um, the, the new employee, what I had learned and, you know, I could barely take care of myself outside of the kitchen, but I was really disciplined inside the kitchen. Um, so early late, early age, uh, I learned to, to learn and, um, you know, the, the more energy I put into it, the more I got out of it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a quest of a journey that still happens every day. It's beautiful. Absolutely. What a beautiful story that in some ways, yes, you gave, you were given the opportunity to work at your friend's family uh, restaurant, but at the same time, it sounds like there was some mentoring, some fostering, some embracing mm -hmm. this young individual who was interested in really working in the restaurant and learning all those uh, culinary skills. And now you're mentoring. I mean, you were growing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Still I'm going just, through puberty and then, you know, <laughs> but, but learning, teaching, working, you know, and yeah. going to high school. So it was a lot, but yeah. I, you know, I pushed through it and it's yeah. amazing. It's amazing too, that there are individuals who have like this profound passion for something. And then if it's not fostered, or people, or they're not given an opportunity, then they move away from that and take a traditional route or whatever uh -huh. is expected of them to do a four year degree or something like that. But you went straight. I mean, your entire career has been in the culinary world. Yeah, in a kitchen, one <laughs> form or the other. Yeah. That's absolutely. wonderful. So yeah. I met someone else, another chef that came on the show, uh, who also went to the Culinary Institute of America. Uh, oh, cool. Cool. that you all call CIA, mm -hmm. which I thought was pretty cool. So tell us about that experience of going there. And I will tell you that she, uh, being a female, found a lot of challenges. You know, she had this strong passion and desire to pursue the culinary world to be a chef and then found that it was very male dominated and she had her own personal experiences. What about you? Like, what kind of challenges did you step into when you kind of moved into the executive chef role? And what was all of that um, experience oh, like yeah. for you? Yeah, the school, school was amazing. It was the same kind of environment that was taught very young. Like, hey, you know, what you put into it, you can get out of it. And, you know, there were students that went there that after eight hours in class, which was crazy for a student, right, for, to go to class for eight hours. But that was culinary school. Um, you know, you could go about your merry day. But what I found out is that if you put in a little more work and, and, and grabbed a little more, you could get a little more out of it. So there was after school programs, there was all sorts of extracurricular, you know, cooking activities and, and joining with chefs and being their fellow and, and just learning as much as you can from that place. And, um, one of my mentors at the time at the restaurant I worked at was also a graduate from there. And he said, you know, don't, don't think it's a party. Like, don't, don't think you're at a normal college because you're not, you're at a place that has, all the tools to teach you, but you have to be willing to, to take those tools and take it upon yourself. So I did, um, you know, I didn't have that experience like most of my friends did of the, you know, the parties and the, the college and the camaraderie, which I wish I did. But at the same time, looking back at it, so grateful that I stuck with it and was, um, you know, thrown into it at such a young age. And yeah, at 23 back in my hometown, I, uh, I was approached by a group of owners and they said, Hey, like we, we've been following you and we know some people that you, that, that know you and 
we've eaten at the restaurant. So at the time I was cooking at a restaurant called region and it was uh, way ahead of its time. Um, we used everything from the farm. Uh, we didn't have onions in the winter. We didn't have garlic in the winter. So like, that's how extreme we were. And so like we were way ahead of its time because there's a lot of, you know, that word farm to table gets thrown around quite a bit, but we were truly farm to table. We didn't have anything in our walk-in cooler because it would come from the farm. We'd prep it, we'd serve it. And then we'd be out at the end of the night. And so this group of owners ate there one night and said, Hey, I, your flavors are amazing. We want you to come work for us. And I was 23 and, and I said, cool, what's the catch? And they said, no catch. You can cook whatever you want. Okay. That's, the, <laughs> that's what we want you to do. So what a dream come true. 23. I had, I had la- landed this job, you know, farmer's market produce, amazing fish from the docks. And, um, I was winning. So, but there was one problem, right? One catch. I couldn't manage anybody. I couldn't barely manage myself at the time. Um, let alone manage a small staff of of uh, cooks, and so once again, I was this young, you know, immature kind of kind of cocky, for better, you know, uh, lack of better term, and um, I had to very quickly bite that and um, and kind of swallow that pride and that ego and teach myself how to teach others. Right, so I had to I had to use my that catalyst that. Er- original catalyst of learning and teaching by example. And that, that was it. I based it all on that. I was like, if I can do it, you can do it. And then we can do it together. And that's the goal. So Mm -hmm. I, you know, so many kitchens have those egos and this is how it's done. Um, but I think because I avoided all that and went right into the job, I, I avoided, um, what your friend had gone through, um, or the other person you interviewed, excuse me, that, um, just the, of that 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 barking order and that military kind of um, machoism, and I did step into a few kitchens like that in my career, but quickly didn't last because I was I was the opposite. You know, I learned from some very strict chefs at a young age and realized that that's in you know they were they were they were mean they were they were kind of um, rude at times and short answers, and I realized I didn't want to be that type of teacher or leader. I needed to be teach with sympathy and empathy and, Mm -hmm. and treat people like my family members. And that's how I was going to get the respect I needed in the kitchen to get the job done. And it worked and it still works to this day. Wow. So, So, yeah. Yeah. It's so much wisdom behind that, that uh, mentality in terms of, as you were talking earlier about, you said I could barely manage myself and then suddenly you're managing other people. It's, being confident in, in stepping into that leadership role without feeling like you have to be aggressive and demeaning. Yeah. No way, <laughs> other, yeah. You know, other things that we see, That's right. And we see that in yeah. reality shows. And I often think it, it's exaggerated, but it sounds like, you know, it could be that it, some kitchens do have that intensity in many yeah. ways. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And they need it, right? Kitchens need to be disciplined. They, and where the front of house, front of house is hospitality. It's anything goes. Yes, yes, yes. But the kitchen, it has to be orderly. It has to be disciplined. But with that is fun. It's so much fun. So that's what I try to teach is just mm-hmm. like, let's have fun. Let's do this, but let's, let's be orderly, but let's have fun. Let's take care yes. of each other. Let's teach. And so you have, you know, you've had all this experience, um, like I said, in the bio, you know, California and New York and now Denver and other places where you've picked up, you know, skills and I'm sure lots in terms of flavors and richness and all of that. Now you're with Whole Harvest and they focus on whole plant-based diet, you know, uh, making the foods rich without any um, any oil. So what inspired you to advocate for this specific approach to nutrition and how do you see it benefiting people's health? Oh, amazing. Yeah. So, so it was a, it was a long road to get to here. Um, but it all started with my own stomach, my own, my own biome and my own kind of diet. So as a young person, I was like a garbage disposal. I could eat anything and, and I'm sure everyone has the same story and eat everything. And I was constantly eating and I would eat until midnight, fall asleep, wake up at seven and start eating again until I fell asleep and not realizing how much strain I was putting on my body. So yeah, I was sensitive to dairy affected by too much meat, too fatty foods. Uh, My stomach has always been very sensitive. So at an early age, I tried to lock in that communication between the brain and the stomach and give my body what I wanted. Um, I realized that if I put bad things in, bad things would come out, right? So mood, attitude, attention, sleep, growth, healing, like all that was impossible to do with a bad diet. Um, and especially processed foods, right? Processed foods just destroy, um, your biome and your gut. So I had to become really aware. Um, another thing 
I was losing family members. Uh, I lost uh, my father. I lost uncles, um, friends, friends' fathers, all to uh, cardiovascular disease. And um, so I, I, I slowly watched um, very close members of my family kind of uh, pass and teeter off because of their diets and their lifestyles. And um, I was I was looking for answers, right? Frustrated as a young twenty year old, looking for answers. You know. 697,000 people died last year from a cardiac disease and a heart attack. 800,000 people had a heart attack, um, not to mention all the other problems, right? Diabetes, cancers, autoimmune disease, inflammation. The list goes on and on and on. Our, our American food system and our diet and our medical system is all kind of unfortunately set up to get us sick, right? Um, so processed foods are destroying us. And it's, and I've realized that and, and this was in past jobs. I'm opening hotels and restaurants for fancy people and eating oysters and, you know, doing all the things that chefs do, but realizing like I'm not making an impact. How do I do something to make an impact? It's not being talked about. You know, the medical system is, 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 you know, corporate run and it's, it's just, why are so many people getting sick? Um, it's in our food, right? It's in our food system. So my late twenties, I realized that, um, I had gained enough knowledge, um, of my own health that I could start to teach others what I've learned. So um, I took a break from kitchens and, and, and joined a junior college and taught a healthy eating class. So it was a 600 hour class, um, all based on cooking techniques um, for healthy eating. And once again, I was 26 years old in a, in a job um, that was, that was professors and, and built with multiple degrees and educations. And here I was this young cook that, uh, that begged for the job um, and got it. And then found great success with that and, and healed many. And, um, and then I would teach, uh, you know, healthy cooking demos. And then all of a sudden the restaurant industry pulled me back in and I was back, um, opening restaurants for a company called True Food Kitchen. And so based on a Dr. Anthony Wiles anti, anti-inflammatory menu and his healthy eating, um, anti-inflammatory based kitchen, um, opened up a whole nother door of knowledge for me. So, um, you know, all those, all those thoughts were in my head, like, like the, our food system, how, how many people have passed because of this, how it can help, what we're eating, um, what we're not eating. The earth has changed, you know, like there's, there's so many nutrients in the soil, you know, hundreds of years ago. And for thousands of years, humans were healing their guts and healing themselves and their ailments from food. And it seems like in the last 150 years, um, we've lost all that, right? So we've, the country has, has taken those rights away from us, you know, access to healthy food and everyone seems to be sick. So I had to do something. So, um, it was just fate. So the biggest catalyst is when I found myself in the hospital. So, uh, two years ago I was in the hospital, I was opening a restaurant on the East coast, um, ran it all summer long by myself with a couple of small team members and, and realized that I was overstressed. Um, I was stress eating. I was eating late at night and falling asleep with a food stomach full of like processed beef and, you know, all that bad stuff. Right. So, um, I ended up in the hospital for a month with, uh, diverticulitis, um, inflamed intestines, um, stressed out and didn't even realize it because I had gotten so accustomed to that, that kind of grind, you know, and I was, um, I was about 38 years old when this happened. So, um, fast forward two years, I met the owner of Whole Harvest um, I heard his story. I was so inspired by him. And they asked me originally if I could just write recipes, right? Like, they, hey, you know, we hear you're a recipe guru and you do recipes. And I said, sure, I can do it. But what else do you have? And they said, what do you mean? And I said, well, well, I'm interested in much more than just writing recipes for you. I want to join your company and help heal thousands and help them on their journey. So they said, let's do it. So I learned about Dr. Dean Ornish's lifestyle medicine and, and you know, incorporating exercise, yoga, meditation, plant-based diets into your food. And then the next step was for me to try it. So, right. So within three days of eating a plant-based diet, like in no oil and, and, and a balanced food, um, you know, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but like, yeah, our, our food is at whole harvest is balanced for the right amount of protein, carbs, calories, and vitamins. And within three days, I felt my body change. I felt my inflammation go down. I felt my stress levels lower. I felt my, my brain more at ease and then I kept going. And a few weeks later I was healed. Like my stomach had shrunk, my inflammation had lowered and I just felt like I was better and it happened so quickly. So then I, I realized, okay, cool. How many more can we help? 
how if this is me and I, I'm not a plant based eater entirely. I'm I'm it's switched so about you know eighty percent plant based, and I treat myself to some chicken and, and meat every now and then. But I'm I'm no way in shape or form how I used to eat, which was just the opposite. The you know the carnivore mm-hmm. diet. Um, so you know you have to look what what works for you, and so. Um, I found something that worked for me. And then, and then the goal is now to, to help as many people along their journey. Mm, what an amazing story. Um, I want to go back to True Food Kitchen. Uh, yeah. Because when I learned that you were associated at one point with True Food Kitchen, I couldn't believe it. I had lunch with Cherise after oh, cool. we did our event. And then I started doing some research on you. And that's when I learned about your partnership that you had with uh, your mentor, who was also a chef that decided to start the yeah. True Food Kitchen. Yeah. And it's been one of my favorite places to have lunch or, you know, just to have a meal because clean eating is very difficult as you're, you know, talking about processed foods. And of course, I knew about Dr. Andrew Weil. Uh, I studied him and, and learned a lot about breath work. And I came into this lifestyle through other modalities, other interests of mine in in the field of like holistic healing or natural medicine or stuff like that. And then I learned about the power of food. Uh Um, I also appreciate what you said about that transition period because people are on different parts of their journey. Every person's journey is individual and different. And mm-hmm. um, the fact that you just got the processed foods out of the diet, which is the most difficult thing to do for many of us because those foods are very addictive. And they're everywhere. There was, yeah. <clears throat> absolutely. There was a physician who gave his testimony and he said he was on a, previously, he had been on a uh, seafood diet, which meant he ate everything that he would see everything in sight. And uh, so, yes. <laughs> you know, so many ten- temptations when you're doing groceries, when when you're at any store, they put the candy bars at the front by the register. And, you know, I think back now as you're talking about how at one point I didn't question those things. If I, if I craved a candy bar, I would pick it up because it was right there and I yeah. could eat it. I would just say yeah. yes to it. Today, I, I'm a little bit more disciplined. Not a little bit. I am <laughs> more disciplined. For sure. Um, and so, and then you answered another question that I had, which was, did you learn about the science behind the food? So you're talking about uh, Dean Ornish. And now I've learned about the partnership that Dean Ornish has had with Whole Harvest. Do you uh-huh. want to tell our audience a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. So that's, I was thrown right into that last summer at this time. Um, and so we, he's just completing his Alzheimer's study. So he's, he's already had amazing results and testimonies and huge medical research and results and positive results of, of, of reversing and, and uh, preventing cardiovascular disease. And so, and many, like many doctors in his field, it's, you know, they're after, they're after reversal of cancers, um, the prevention of cancers, autoimmune disease, diabetes, um, and then Alzheimer's, of course, is what he's working on now. But um, the biggest piece is, is food. It's all in food, right? The power is all there to heal the body. Um, to reverse, to prevent um, all the horrible things from coming in. And the biggest the biggest part is once you get that inflammation down, then your body can start to heal itself. It, it can't do anything if it's fighting inflammation. So, you know, biggest thing is inflammation, get that under control. Um, but the, the most amazing study, and, and look, like my whole career, I've always wondered why. So the science behind why an egg fluffs up when you whip it, so all, you know, and so forth, and why beef um, caramelizes when you put it in a, a hot pan. So all, all that knowledge, uh, is just transferred over to this, um, to healthy eating and, and nutrition. So Dean Arnish is, is the, the beautiful secret behind so many of his, um, success is, is, uh, keeping the food at a, at a, at an even level. So, so the right amount of protein, the right amount of minerals, the right amount of carbs and calories, if you can control that and eat that on a, on a routine basis, so your body can heal. So the, the idea is to have everything in an even keel, get your body leveled out so it's not going up. Your glucose levels aren't spiking when you eat. Um, and, and look, the way I eat and the way we all are forced in America is difficult, right? It's difficult to shop. It's difficult to go to a store and shop. That's Cooking's not necessarily the hard part. It's shopping because it's all set up to be cheap um, on the shelf and readily available for you and addictive and have that craveability factor. And then you go, what did I do? I bought a broccoli. I bought some noodles that are made from quinoa. What do I do with that? 
and it and you go home and you just get so confused so it's very overwhelming but it's 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 not um it's not a a, a, a mystery it's just difficult because it's set up right it's set up in the wrong way Yes. And we need those strategies. Uh, there's so much in this journey that we need to learn along the way. It's sort of, this is the, and I'm going to try to say this real quickly, but the way that I look at what you're describing in terms of the difficulty of doing groceries, so much food is wasted when you mm-hmm. don't have a plan. But so I myself do not like to shop for apparel. Uh, unlike <laughs> other people, I'm not the person that goes into the mall or into, you know, any of these stores and knows how to put a look together. I'm not a fashionista or however people say that. So that's how I look at it. I go into a store, I grab a blouse because I like the way it looks. Maybe I'll grab a skirt somewhere else. And then I'm home and I don't know what looks to put together with the uh, the different individual pieces that I purchase. Um, sometimes I struggle with that. That's like what you're describing. You go into the grocery store and here's some tomatoes just in case I need them. And unless you have a plan of how you will use these foods and make sure that you use them all throughout the week, then you end up with the broccoli that is now turned yellow or so. (laughs) (laughs) And now you're throwing it away at the end of the week. And you realize you just spent $90 on on nothing you can really put together more than once. It's it's really tr- tricky to navigate. And so that's yeah. what Harvest is, is nailing it. So we put all that work into the food and and so you don't have to. And that's the goal. So you yeah. can concentrate on healing and and meditating, and which I don't meditate. I've, I've, I've worked on that for it. <laughs> haven't had success with that, but, but stretching, right? Um, yeah. Relaxing, being outside with your family um, and, and not stressing over cooking. And so that's that's where Dean Ornish um believes the wind should be the you know the 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 food should be delicious and healthy so that you can enjoy your life and that others can enjoy your life and that's part of it um Mm -hmm. trying to help as many people um be better so they can be with their families and spend more time outside and do the things they love and not be so much in in much pain you know Mm -hmm. you know will i often say that um if i had a personal chef cooking every meal for me and i didn't have to worry about or think about the meals I would eat the food, of course. Mm -hmm. I think many people would eat healthy if someone else prepped the food for them. Absolutely. It's that mental struggle of where do I get started? And I have to take that extra time from the week to prep for these foods. And most of us are maxed out in terms of our schedules and all of that. Um, Yeah, yeah, life is overwhelming. This is why Whole Harvest helps. Now, uh, I want to learn about the food. And I will tell you, um, we had a culinary medicine workshop here recently. And a lot of food was left behind. And uh, I participants didn't take the food. I was so busy recording testimonials that I didn't. I, the, the first thing I would have done was I would have said, hey, take this, eat it at home, do the best you can this week. Anyway, so I found myself, well... This week, you know, this past week, being very creative in the kitchen as to how I can use the ingredients to either make a salad or a drink or just because I didn't want the food to go to waste. So I say that because I believe that one of the things I, I admire about trained chefs is that you can go into the kitchen and not have a recipe and make a delicious meal with what you find in the refrigerator. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, one of our skills, yeah. <laughs> that's one of the skills. So please tell us, okay, so Whole Harvest focuses, like we said, on this whole uh, plant-based diet. Um, give us some insights as to how you, uh, you know, curate your foods. What considerations go into creating the dishes? You just talked about how you want the food to be balanced. So the same, you know, you add, you want adequate protein in there and other things in there. So, um, how do you plan that out? How do you curate these delicious meals? Yeah, yeah. So, so the first process is is uh, just like an artist. You know, when an artist paints a picture. They're not necessarily painting that picture for somebody individually. They're painting that picture for themselves, right? So that's, and then someone wants it because they're the famed artist, right? They'll pay the money for the beautiful picture. Um, but really that artist painted that picture for themselves, right? So that's the same process with this. Like the food that I want to eat is the food that I curate. So, so if it sounds good to me, that's, it's going to sound good to you as well because I've been doing this since I was 15. So like there's, there might be a little bit of knowledge there. So like that's the same process. I'm not. If I, if I could had to try to tailor to everyone's likes, it would be very difficult. 
um, very difficult job at hand. But since I'm, I'm curating these foods and, and kind of creating these dishes based on what sounds good to me, um, the rest is all, is all parameters and nutrition after that. So then, so then I, I come up with a dish. Let's say it's a, it's a kale salad with some quinoa and stuff. That sounds really good to me. Cool. How do I make that into a marketable dish that, that everybody alike that eats kale before would enjoy? So, that, that's when the parameters of Whole Harvest come in, and that's what kind of makes Whole Harvest unique from all the other companies out there that are after that kind of quick profit. That 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 look at me, it's what's trending right now. Um, but these owners and our philosophy here at, at Whole Harvest is, is is look, we are a business, but our goal is to make the most nutritionally packed meal um, in the best possible way, which we'll talk about in a second. But um, but m- mostly the the parameters that we live by are, are protein, calories, carbs, fat, and vitamins. And um, uh, you know we have a specific amount of protein we're after, um, specific amount of calories that we want to fit in between, not go above, not go below. Because um, you don't want to lose weight, you want to eat this food and eat a lot of it um, because it is it is it is protein and it is calorie packed food from vegetables, not the kind of calories that your body doesn't want. Um, so. All those have to be considered. So you see a lot of, you see a lot of legumes in our dishes. You see a lot of grains and legumes and those are for calories and for fiber and protein content. And, you know, another thing that we did when we, you know, so I'll come up with a meal and the way I, the way I, I, I kind of base the idea on is the blue zone. So mm. the blue zones across the, the world, you see these, um, areas and pockets of, of people living as centenarians. So living, living over the age of a hundred and you, and you see what they do. So how do they do it? Okay, cool. Some, some are eating meat. Um, some are eating meat and cheese and vegetables and lots of dairy and lots of, uh, let's say they're eating lots of uh, olive oil. So to say that each one is better than the other is to say that each person desires a, a, the same, which is not. So everyone's gut is different, right? So we had to consider that. And so, um, based as a, as a business model. Okay. What do we do? Let's, let's focus on, on these nutritional plant-based products, um, that we know we can knock out of the park and that it has to be shipped, right? So we can serve it to you in a restaurant and it'll be amazing, but does it ship? Does it carry over? Can it be cold? Um, can it fly on an airplane? And, and so there's so (laughs) many considerations. Um, but the main thing is, is, uh, is, is, is food that's designed to bring the inflammation down, um, concentrate on on helping you with your ailments and that's and that's proven that it's plant-based right so no matter what works you know i know people that keto works i know people that are carnivores i know people that are vegans and it, they've all had success so um we fall into the plant category um, because we feel it's the quickest way for your body to respond um and to reverse and so we consider all that when making a dish. So it's not just, it is an idea that I'll have and we stick with it, but then comes all the back pieces of it, of, um, of, you know, of the concentrating on, on the fats and the proteins and the vitamins and the minerals. And so it's mm-hmm. all in food. It's all in food yes. with the right balance. And, um, some of it's cooked, some of it's raw. And so, um, quite a bit of work goes into it and quite a bit of tasting, quite a bit of R and D, um, and and we're open to any comments. I'll, I'll create a dish, and and um, people will just say that's not what we're looking for. So we stop and we go again. And then sometimes I'll create a dish, and it'll just be a knockout. So mm-hmm. we are open to learn, and we are learning the process ourselves, you know, as we go along. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's been quite yeah. A and I like you started off with the idea that you can't try to please everyone Mm -hmm. in a way that just is what you were saying that for the most part, you cannot please everyone. When I make a dish, I usually always tweak it because I know which flavors really, you know, I I enjoy the most. So that's kind of like how I would put it uh, from that perspective is that no matter, even if you go to a restaurant, there's probably something you add to that dish, which, Mm -hmm. you know, the chef that was here the other day did not want me to mix the foods. He made this delicious um, lentil stew. And then I think there was the sort of like the boat, the tofu. He made like these Asian inspired tofu boats. with cool. to- Yeah. And I was trying to blend the tofu, <laughs> not completely bl- blend, but put them side by side so I can have both of them. He said, do yeah. not mix the food. <laughs> he, he was very particular about how the, len- the uh, beluga lentil stew tastes delicious on its own. And he wanted us to enjoy those flavors. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And um, <laughs> now Harvest, Whole Harvest send each of our participants this workshop that we held, uh, two meals, 
So every participant walked away with a uh, a harvest bowl and a oh, cool. lasagna meal. Yeah. And uh, one of the harvest uh, the the harvest bowls was uh, left behind, and of course I ate it. And so <laughs> it was so delicious, yeah. and I I had to have my husband sample it as well. And I will say the portions are so large, and we sometimes we split meals. It's just our thing, and we. Loved it. The tofu with the quinoa. And what really impressed me was the butternut squash. Um, how well kept it was because that's one produce that if you do, you know, and as soon as you chop it up and store it, if you don't eat it right away, it spoils. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's always been your experience, but yummy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It kind of gets a, a little, it goes bad quick. And that's, that's our hugest mission here is, uh, you know, one of our one of our secrets is that we cook in a 24 hour period. So like, uh, if you order the food, um, the food is prepped from scratch to cooked in a, in, a, in a day and then it's shipped off the following. So nothing is stored here. We don't have like a shelf of, um, produce to pick off of that's prepped. It's not the way we run our business. It's so it's optimally fresh. And so locking all those nutrients, um, we cook things as, um, as clean as we can. We know we use steam. We don't, we don't use any oils as, as mentioned before, but our, our mission is to, is to use the highest quality ingredients and then to simply prepare them the best we can and, and mm. let, you know, let the farmers do the work and let the organics speak for themselves. And, and I'm not trying to manipulate anything. And, and to your point, what you said about yeah. the chef getting, getting, you know, kind of uneasy about the way you ate <laughs> That's we're, we're the opposite of whole harvest. So we have additions to our foods of dressings and different spices you can add to your food because we all know that it's like in a restaurant when someone orders a medium well piece of steak or whatever. And the chef, that classic story of the chef getting angry, like the meat's not meant to be a right. medium well, but like, look, that's not your job to decide <laughs> that that's the person paying $40 for a steak. They can have it however they want. That's the same yeah. with us. We're going to provide this nutritionally packed meal um, that's cooked to the best of our abilities with the right amount of sodium, the right amount of, of carbs and fat and protein and so forth. And you can do whatever you want with it. <laughs> you can, you can, <laughs> you can put the hot sauce on it. You can go ahead and, and season it up the way you like with a little extra love and sea salt or whatever. Um, that's the goal. That's the beauty of life. I'm not, we're not here to tell anybody how to eat. We're here to help them along their journey once again. Mm -hmm. And yeah. two other things that come to mind in terms of the food is that immediately what came to mind when I saw the Harvest Bowl is, uh, one, I often encourage my listeners to play around with the idea of creating Buddha bowls or mm -hmm. just bowls with a basic, you know, say like a grain and then greens and vegetables and, and all the, you know, the things that they enjoy in a bowl style. So they're not relying on a recipe. Because yeah. that's where people get stuck. And number two, the ingredients you have reminded me of the Daily Dozen, Dr. Michael Greger's recommendations of the foods that we should have every day because of the richness of um, nutrients that they have. And so like the grains and the greens and the butternut squash um, and the mushrooms, which are so key and they're in oh, your yeah. dishes as well. So I, that's what I want to communicate with my listeners is to let them know that I did sample the food at least one of the meals and found it to be not only a good amount of food, because you said you want people to eat healthy, but also flavorful, well packaged, uh, maintained well. And Sharice did explain to us a little bit about how the packaging takes place to really remove any error from the packaging that could continue, contribute to spoiling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the yeah. next mission for us. It's that next phase we invested in these uh, vacuum seal machines that'll pull oxygen out of the food, uh, giving it a longer shelf life. So that's our next phase. And so, yeah, to give our customers and and subscribers even even longer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's overwhelming to receive a box of food and have to eat it in accordingly really quickly. Otherwise, it spoils, right? So mm -hmm. um, that's why we made the investments to to take our company to the next level to give mm -hmm. even more shelf life. And yeah, the the food is packed. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, like you said, it does have those, those dozens. Um, that's what we do focus on is, you know, um, mushrooms for, for, for brain energy and immune building, um, leafy greens for, um, for the antioxidant purposes and the anti-inflammation, 
um, and the protein. There's so much protein in greens that people don't even realize that's tapped. It's so much to tap right there. Um, tofu, you know, tofu gets a bad rap um, of the estrogen and the you know men growing breasts, and it's 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 not true. <laughs> it's 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 vegetable estrogen, which is so healing and 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 there's so much packed into a block of tofu at your store that that it's un, it's a shame that the meat industry has kind of given it a bad in, a bad image but um tofu is a whole food plant based it's a processed food item right it's a soybean that's crushed and 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 ground into a milk and then pressed um coagulated and so forth but look once you figure out a couple tricks on how to cook tofu and how we do it here and and um we teach people how to cook it you know you can mm. do it at your house you don't have to order from us but um such a healing food it's such a gentle um healer for your for your gut and the protein is amazing so mm-hmm. yeah and, and then and then everything else like our squashes and our we try to cook as seasonal as possible so right now we have a uh, the late spring and and midsummer dishes and we'll transition into our fall seasonality ingredients just to try to to try to have what's optimally delicious at the time Mm, yes. Oh my goodness. And this kind of takes me back to what you said earlier about your, you know, mission driven in the sense that you wanted your life purpose to be through your culinary skills, through what you've learned in your training. You want to help, you want to make an impact in this world and you're doing it with Whole Harvest. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're here and we're here to help everyone. You know, and like I said, it's there's there's some wild wild facts out there and anomalies. Like uh, you know, you hear of people smoking cigarettes until they're 110 years old, or you know, like the fact that this diet might not work for you. Um, but you know, just to just to drive it home, it's it's a lifestyle of healing. It's it's you have to make the choice. I, I, you know, we can't force anybody to do anything. As as humans, we're we're very stubborn people, and so you know, it has to be that mission that someone wants to take on themselves. And then we're here, we do monthly videos. Um, we're opening a restaurant soon and many more on the way. We're here to answer questions any day. So you can reach out to any one of us at all harvest through our website or whatever it is. Um, um, and, and ask a question, you know, what, what do I do with this ingredient or, or, Hey, my stomach's been kind of feeling a little funny. Uh, what do I do? Or, you know, um, we're here to help along the way, along the journey. Um, Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. So I have one last question, sort of, and this is more associated with paradigm shift. So I myself don't have any training, although I did take a culinary course, but I've been that person that loves cooking shows. I love following certain chefs, even if they're not vegan, because it's an art. I mean, just like what you said, watching people, how they how they orchestrate, you know, how they create in the kitchen. So, you know, being in the kitchen, I love watching these videos. So, uh, you know, and you see certain chefs, like I won't say who, but, but I enjoy watching them take that. Um, for example, um, I already forgot, probably the oyster mushroom and they char it, you know, they really press it onto that um, cast iron to make yeah. these, these steaks. And uh, so I think about all of that, like, was there a paradigm shift for you? All this training and ex- exposure that you had working from the East Coast to the West Coast, picking up flavors, cooking all sorts of meals, and now you're creating something that's not as fried, you know, not deep fried and not yeah, necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> what has that been like for you? It was it was a part of the biggest question in my interview process. Can it be done? And and of course it can be done. So that's to 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 be clear on that is it's the still the same process. I, I have a craving for learning, a craving for knowledge. And this has been the same journey is I'm, I'm teaching myself how to use the same techniques I've learned, whether it's, you know, at the fanciest 10 course meal restaurant I've worked at or, or, um, or a package of food that you get delivered to your house. It's the same process, the same techniques, the same quality of ingredients and care to attention that mm-hmm. that has um, transferred over so that's why this job that i have is not for everybody because they can't get away from that if it's not the best ahi tuna then they're not the chef they thought they were so it's one of those things where i'm just as excited to do this style of food as i was um working in michelin star kitchen um it's it's the same exact thing the same process the same discipline um, and the same um, result is you're trying to make someone happy through the avenue of food and that's what we're doing but this mm. is much more. We're healing. Um, we're helping people get their lives back, and we're helping people avoid um, 
a life catastrophe through food. And it's, I truly believe in it. I truly believe that it is the way to heal the world is, is food getting mm-hmm. back to where we were before mm-hmm. corporations took over and, um, and put us in these pigeonholes. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful so, thing to yeah. be part of something. And that's why I love what I do as a podcaster and as a leader in my community, because I know that I'm somehow helping absolutely. for people to have better quality of life. And it's so rewarding when I have people like yourself on the show that can oh. continue to, you know, foster and help, you know, build this community through good food. How can people learn more about you? Please share your social media or website, anything. Yeah. Yeah, I've got the social media, the uh, Chef Will Harris, and then uh, wholeharvest.com is our website. And you can see our food, see what it looks like, kind of get the vibe of what we're doing, order the food off the website. Um, we've just started doing some YouTube videos um, that we we, we we do like a, a monthly or two, maybe bi-monthly, or no, I mean, tw- twice a month video for mm-hmm. our customers and subscribers where there's cooking tips and little tricks and um, some nutritional facts and they get to hear me kind of babble about food for an hour and then it goes onto YouTube. So you can check out the YouTube <laughs> channels. Um, and yeah, that, that's it. Just, you know, yeah. and also my advice is just like have that sense of wonder, you know, like do the research, don't listen to what people say um, uh, negatively about your diet or your food or what you're on or your mission. Um, I think so many people in this country have been taught generationally that it's, 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 uh, you're going to be strong if you eat the meat and, and keep the protein coming and, you know, eat this because that's what I was given as a kid. And so it, that happens so much in our country, right? It takes, it takes each individual to kind of break out of that, that pattern and seek the knowledge for themselves. And once they do, we're here for you and we'll help you on the journey with our mm-hmm. meals. And then once you kind of see, what we're what we're providing and and how cool it is yeah give it a shot tell your friends and then and then also prepare meals at your house and then the creativity comes so yeah. one technique one idea blossoms into four or five and it just keeps going so that's the that's the fun part about it that's a beautiful message thank you so much for sharing that with my yeah, listeners and thank you again chef will thank, thank you. you so much maya yeah it was a pleasure to be here today You've been listening to the Healthy Lifestyle Solutions podcast with your host, Maya Acosta. If you've enjoyed this content, please share with one friend who can benefit. You can also leave us a five-star review at ratethispodcast.com forward slash HLS. This helps us to spread our message. As always, thank you for being a listener.